Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Judging by the emails I receive, I've come to realize that many people aren't realizing the full potential of Luminar 4. I think there's three reasons for that. First of all, Luminar 4 could do a lot. There's a lot in Luminar 4, and not everyone is fully schooled on everything that is in Luminar 4. Second, everything that's in Luminar 4, in my opinion, it really isn't laid out in a way that makes for a concise and effective workflow. Stuff is kind of all over the place. And to effectively work on an image, you'll have to jump around quite a bit. And finally, uh, to get the full potential out of Luminar 4, you really need to take advantage of layers. And many people just won't go anywhere near layers. In this video, I'm going to process this image and I'm going to show those issues and how I work around them and how I take advantage of layers to process an image such as this. Now, um, it's a raw file. It's a raw file from a DSLR. Now, the first thing I like to do when I shoot raw from a DSLR is lens corrections. Now, if you're shooting JPEG, you don't have to worry about it. Or if you're shooting a mirrorless camera raw, you don't have to worry about it. But if you're still shooting a DSLR, this is important. Now, when you open up Luminar 4 on an image and you go to the edit uh, panel and you're in the essentials tab, that's where it starts. You can't get lens corrections here. This is where one of the things, at least, that I don't think it's laid out very well. You have to go to the canvas panel and then down to lens and geometry, and then you could check these boxes here. Now, again, if you're shooting a JPEG, you won't see these here, but then you have to check them. So you have to jump over there to get to them, and you should do those first thing in your workflow because quite often when you correct any lens distortions, it often will brighten up the corners of the image and things like that. And you need to have that uh, at the beginning so that you could process your image properly. Then we'll jump back down to the Essentials panel, go up to the light. Now the next thing that I recommend everyone do and that I want to do is profiles because a profile could drastically change the color, contrast, and tone of your image. Well, it's kind of hidden. It's, it is in the Essentials panel in the Light tab, but it's down here in Advanced Settings. So you have to click there, then you could go to the Profile dropdown, and you're always going to have the Luminar default. Now this, for this camera, I prefer the camera landscape or camera vivid profiles for this type of image. And you can see if I hover over Camera Landscape, it's a, it's a drastic dimmer, difference between that and Luminar default. And Camera Vivid, too, even has a drastic difference. So you should do that right after you do lens corrections, but you got to kind of hunt for it. And that's, again, my opinion, that Luminar 4 is really not laid out um, as well as it could be. So once I do that, now I want to do white balance. And that's good. That's where it should be. It's in the light tab right at the top. And I'm just going to warm it up just a touch. That's all I'm going to do on this image. Then I'll really start adjusting tone. That's what I like doing next. So good, that's right here. So I could adjust tone. Now we're gonna bring highlights in a little bit. We're gonna open up the shadows quite a bit. Then along with tone, I'll adjust the whites and blacks. And since I'm working on a Mac, I'll hold my option key in to adjust the whites. And you can see I'm already uh, blown, out, blown out at the top here. That's because the sun was up there. And again, I'll hold that option key in on my Mac and click on blacks and move this left until I start clipping a little bit on the blacks. Now, if you're using a PC, you would hold the Alt key in. I'm not sure though that that works on a PC. Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, if it does. I'm just curious if that does work on a PC by holding the Alt key in. All right, so I've done that. The next thing I like to do is noise reduction. Now that is in the Essentials panel, so that's good. So we'll just go to the noise. And this was at a pretty low ISO and this camera has good um, good uh, noise um, capabilities. So um, I don't really don't have to do much here. Just luminosity up maybe a little bit as I zoom in just to see. And by the way, in the description below this video, I'll have a list of all the equipment I used and the settings I used to capture this image. Also, I have a discount code for Luminar. I'll have that listed in the description below this video as well. So, so far, so good. I had to jump around a little bit, but not too much. Now, once I do those global adjustments at this point, before I do any sharpening or anything, I kind of like to um, adjust color and things like that. But typically, 
I like to adjust color in a more local way. I don't like, want to make everything more colorful. I want to make selective things more colorful. I want people to look at this waterfall and I want this bank over here to be more colorful because it actually was. When I was there, this bank was super red and um, it's not really coming through as much on this image. So I'm going to do a local adjustment and to do that, I'm going to need to get a layer to do it. So we're going to go up to layers. We're going to click the little plus sign and we're going to click a new adjustment layer. Now, right now, if I add an adjustments, for instance, I'll go to light and I'll turn exposure up. And it's going to affect every single pixel on the image, but I just want to brighten up this bank. So what I'll do is I'll do what I just did. I'll add a new adjustment layer. I'll go to exposure, turn it up. Then I'll jump back to the layers, go to that adjustment layer, click on edit mask. I'll get a brush and I'm just going to brush. Watch, I'll just click once with my left mouse button. And it actually removed the adjustment everywhere, but it's right there. Now it's a local adjustment on this adjustment layer. And I could brighten up this bank like I want it to. I want to, I should say. And I'm just going to do it real quick. I'm probably not going to do a very good job, but you'll get the idea. So we're brightening up that bank. And now any adjustments I do will only be done right there on that bank. So we'll go back to uh, the Essentials panel and uh, just readjust exposure a little bit. I'm just going to bring it down just a touch. And then we're going to go to um, close down light. We're going to go to color and I'm going to go to saturation and bring saturation up. As I mentioned, that bank was pretty colorful. So we'll do that. Now, what I like to do for waterfalls is I like to brighten up the blurred part of the waterfall, the white part of the waterfall. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back to layers, I'm going to add another adjustment layer. And again, we're going to go to the essentials panel to the light tab. We're going to turn exposure up again. It's going to affect the entire image. Then we're going to go back up to layers. See how we have to jump around a little bit to do all this stuff. So we'll go back up to layers, edit the mask, get a brush, and we're going to brush in the adjustment on the waterfall. So we're just going to brighten up the waterfall and I'll get a bigger brush to go faster and be a little more sloppy, but you'll get the idea what I'm doing and why I do it. We're going to brighten up this little part of the waterfall also. And I also want to brighten up like this kind of trail of white that's coming out here. So all this is getting done on this third layer. We have the original layer, the first adjustment layer where I brightened up the bank and added more uh, saturation to it. And then the top adjustment layer where we're brightening up the, the white part of the waterfall and the white part of the water down in here. All right, now after I do those local adjustments, if I want to do any more, I would do them, but I think that's pretty good. But now I want to do adjustments to the entire image. Now I could jump back down to the original layer and do it, but then it turns off the layers above it. So what I want to do then is just add another adjustment layer. And now I'm going to do some sharpening and things like that. So we're going to go to the Essentials panel again. We're going to go to Details Enhancer. And I like to start out with large details and move that to the right. Then I'll go to medium and move that and then small. And then maybe I'll readjust medium, maybe a little lower. So that's the way I like to do it. And then we'll add some sharpening as well. So again, that's affecting every pixel and I want it to, I'm not going to add a mask to this. So I think that's pretty good right there. I uh, will go to landscape enhancer and I'm going to go to golden hour a little bit, move that to the right. Go to Foliage Enhancer. I usually don't like Foliage Enhancer though, but I mean, we'll just inch that up a little bit. Um, I could change the tone of the foliage with the advanced settings, but I'm not going to do it or the hue of the foliage, I should say. And I think that's pretty good. And then finally, I'll finish it off with a vignette and we'll make it a dark vignette, move it to the left. We'll choose the subject. I'm going to just do it right in the middle of the waterfall. So it's going to darken this area over here is not interesting at all right so we want people to look over here so i think that is the way we would do it so there is before and there's after before after so you can see i think um what i'm trying to talk about here how there's so much you could do in luminar 4 i mean i only did a few things and it really you could make the argument it could uh it over processed the image right but uh, you could do a lot, but everything's kind of all around and you got to jump around a little bit. 
And I think that uh, once you get um, familiar with the workspace and all the little tools, I think you'll get uh, start taking advantage of everything you could do in Luminar 4. And hopefully this video helps you now realize what you could do and how you could go about achieving what you want to achieve using Luminar 4. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.